नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू दिस एक्साइटिंग एपिसोड ऑफ सत्तोलॉजी डी बंकिंग मिथोलॉजी सत्तोलॉजी मीन साइंस ऑफ ट्रुथ स्टडी ऑफ ट्रुथ अपोजिट ऑफ दैट इज मिथोलॉजी विच इज साइंस और स्टडी ऑफ फेक लाइफ और इमेजिनेशन द वर्ड मिथोलॉजी हैज बीन कॉइंड परपजली टू अंडरमाइन द हिस्टोरिसिटी ऑफ नेटिव कल्चर्स इन द नेम ऑफ एविडेंस लाइक देयर इज नो एविडेंस वेयर देयर इज नो एविडेंस ऑफ मेनी थिंग्स इन दिस वर्ल्ड बिकॉज़ पीपल कैन इजीली फोटोशॉप it can easily be challenged but the kind of evidence which is offered in ramayan and mahabharat about the historicity of ramayan and mahabharat is irrefutable because it is astronomical evidence it is archaeological evidence it is the evidence of the earth structures geography and therefore you cannot undermine that those places still exist those kind of people still exist even the horses described in mahabharat and ramayan still exist because they describe about the different type of species of horses so it all it's all been compiled in my books as well and i've published them in my books you can search sathology on amazon you can check out those books i have a very very special guest and a very good friend who was also my host in india in very important place he took me there so let us welcome dr ml raja Yes. Yes. Namaskar. Namaskar. So, Doctor Raja, when when we talk about the temple architectures of India, see the ancient temples of India, or Hindu temples which are there, have been known for very large campuses, very very large campuses, and made with stone with intricate carvings. So, how do you think that stands out as compared to other? places of worship around the world see in ancient india especially the kings they constructed their palaces with uh, bricks but the temples with stones because they think they are mortal the kings are mortal so for them bricks are sufficient but god is immortal so it should be permanent so it should live long long it should last long so they made it in a stone and why the temples in india especially in tamil nadu the area is huge means it is not only the temples is not a place for worship alone worship the almighty alone uh, it is the center for education it is the center for relaxation of the people arts and dance will be there bharatanatyam will be there in that and also the sculpture and the drawings and also it is the storehouse of grains so when there is a famine or a flood the people the king used to store grains in that it is a storehouse and it is also a nyaya sthala that is where judgment is given so many uh, conflicts with the local people small small petty things it will be uh, here there and the judgment will be passed so it is a social center it is not alone it is definitely the main thing is worship worship of the almighty but it doesn't end with that it is a social center where learning will be there and uh, economy will be there uh, arts and uh, culture will be there culture definitely culture is there and heritage and also uh, this nyaya sthala judiciary everything will be there so it is a collective place for the center place and also there will be many tanks inside a temple there will be a tank storehouse of water so that storehouse will be full then the houses adjoining houses they will have small small well so from this the water will go there so it is also storehouse of water so it is a multi purpose social thing that's why the temples are larger in uh, india especially in tamil nadu and uh, it all built by stones built because the kings and the people thought it should last long for that purpose they constructed their own houses and palaces with bricks that will go away at a certain period of time but stone will last a minimum of 1500 to 2000 years for that purpose only they constructed in stone 
so that is the greatness of the mindset and the attitude of uh, our ancient indians and also how they connect everything with the worship of almighty spiritual and uh, material both are connected in the temple that way it is very important very important concept and attitude of ancient indians very interesting because the modern day all the churches are also made with stone in the us all stones churches are mostly made with stone and in europe also churches are also made in stone and the, that was the same purpose which was that the place of god should be permanent but the 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 thing which we see in india nowadays because of many attacks and everything is that the temples have become largely the new temples which are coming up because of paucity of funds you know less funds and other things people make with sh- shelters also and there are many temples in india which are not kept properly and uh, we we visited one of the temples over there and the satology would love to uh, we need your support to renovate the temple quickly as quickly as possible varadraj temple in, in yes. tamil nadu tirupattu Yes. so so we, we want to do that now so why is that the current the, the new temples that are being made are not made with such material like what is the reason generally you told correctly the paucity of funds first thing that is the main reason because in ancient period the kings will uh, supported the construction of temples fully because hindu uh, because hinduness of the kings they are king hindu they, they constructed the temples they not only constructed even both buddhist uh, thing uh, they everything they jain and everything they constructed but mainly they constructed with the help of the funds from the government so government uh, contribution is maximum and also people also in before 1750s you see the economy of india is uh, very high level the gdp of uh, uh, india before and also international trade export everything if you compare uh, 300 400 years india is number one in the entire world so at the time wealth was abundant you see in, in tiruvananthapuram temple patmanabha temple still we are having abundant wealth in the treasure thing so on this basis the rich people donate fully to the temple because people are not poor at poverty but after the rule of this colonial rule the economy went down even near 0% that's why people also don't have money and because of the aligned government government is also not supporting anyhow people uh, with some somehow they adjusted and they maintained the larger temple you see in sidambaram temple at the time uh, this sidambaram that uh, dikshida they went outside and built some money from others and they maintained the temple that larger temple also maintained even in spite of all uh, hardships and the construction of the small temple also small small temple according to their level of economy the people constructed so when the government support it will come like any day because of the no government support now and also people are also now only for the past 10 years or 15 years india is developing before that poverty was there in 70s uh, 1950 60s and all. india is a very poor country so just to, to maintain livelihood itself is a difficult thing for them so that is the reason so uh, you have presentation now dr raja yes yes you know i shall so, i said yes we can begin that and then we'll continue speaking on this actually see it's very surprising that india is becoming the third largest economy or and gradually is going to become the second largest and you know every other country people invest in their culture but only in india people don't invest in their culture they invest in everything else you know the other if you you mention the kings and other play people they sacrifice their life for building a temple today 
people sacrifice everything to build a house. It's so different approach now. You know, yes. that's okay. One thing I want to add, say the spiritual base of India make it possible to survive even today. So now people are a little bit materialistic because of the foreign rule and also the influence of the foreign countries. But slowly this thing will change. India is a spiritual country. It is not a materialistic country. But it prosper, the prosperity in materialism, though it is a spiritual country, is very high in ancient days. Now, because of that spiritualism only, India again raising. So people will come slowly to spiritualism. In another 10, 20 years, they will realize spirituality is the best thing and materialism is a secondary thing. So that people will realize once a country becomes spiritual, it will develop in materialistic thing also. That is the secret of this creation of the universe by Almighty. That we should understand. Let us begin, Dr. Raja. Okay. Uh, first of all, I express my wholehearted thanks to Sri Aditya Ji and also the volunteers of Sitala Ji. And I express my wholehearted thanks to the professors, eminent personalities, and the beloved students of various universities. Uh, 265 universities in North America, they are listening. So I express my heartfelt thanks to all the students and professors and eminent personalities of these universities of ESA at this very early hour in the morning. So I express my vanakam and namaskar to one and all. In this session, I am going to express my views on the temple architecture in ancient India. How the temples are constructed? What is the basic thing uh, in that construction, whether it is scientific or uh, without any scientific basis, just like that they constructed, but that we have to analyze. Uh, that means I have to express to know whether it is scientific or not, astronomy and also sangu stapanam. That is uh, erection of a sangu, the, a small rod. Uh, why they are most important in temple construction in Indies, in ancient India? What astronomy and this erection of a small rod, a wooden rod, uh, played major role in temple construction that is I am going to express in this session. Uh, this is a temple, a village temple in my village. Actually, my father only constructed this temple. This is a, a Mariamma, that is Parvati Mata temple. So Parvati Mata, Saraswati Mata and Lakshmi Mata are there. This is the Gopra, this is the front portion of this temple. So in India, in, especially in Tamil Nadu, every village will have this type of temples, beautiful temples. And this is uh, the great temple, Tirupati. Eh? Everybody will worship immediately when we say Tirupati. Throughout India, they will, through their mind, they will worship Lord Vengadeshwara. And this is uh, the Ganapati temple in my village, small temple. So like that, every will, in, in Tamil Nadu, uh, in every village, there will be a Ganapati temple. The number of Ganapati temple in Tamil Nadu will be more than if you put the whole Ganapati temple in whole of India. That much Ganapati temple is there. A village is there, means there should be a Ganapati temple. So this is my village, Ganapati temple. And this is the famous Siddhambaram temple, Nadraja temple, huh? uh, where Nad Nadraja dances. And this is a mover temple, see beautiful. Actually, three temples are there. This first temple was destructed by foreign aligned military forces. So this is a beautiful temple constructed 1200 years before with excellent thing. I have personally visited that. There is no Sivalinga. That is the worst thing. Uh, it is uh, maintained by AISI. So these are all the temples about just an introduction of temples in India. In temple construction, two important things are to be fixed before starting construction. That is the auspicious time, the good time for the beginning, either beginning of the temple, construction of the temple, that is Bhumi Buja, worshipping Mother Earth. 
so in, in any construction in india even house or palace or temple anything we have to do a bhumi puja that is worship our mother earth because uh, uh, we are going to dig holes and other things so just we have to worship and pray a mother earth after that only we start and kumbha abhishekam that means the concluding ceremony of the construction and uh, making the idol made of stone as a deity how we made that is a science and another important thing is fixing the directions mainly eight direction that is north east south west and the four in between direction north west or north east like that so this is an important thing this is only i am going to narrate how they fixed the directions exact east here astronomy played an important role and based on astronomy only the directions are fixed in india and the construction as proceeded uh, what is astronomy astronomy is nothing but a branch of science that will deals with the study of celestial bodies celestial bodies means in science we can say graha or gola that is stars planets satellites comets everything and the phenomena that originate outside the atmosphere of earth earth's atmosphere beyond that what is uh, the phenomenon or the forces gravitation force extra gravitational force what they are acting that under, uh, comes under astronomy and it also concerned with the evolution physics chemistry meteorology and the motion of the celestial objects that is physics uh, how uh, what are the forces acting on them how they move Uh, and also the formation of development in universe that is cosmology all this comes under astronomy so this is a branch of science pure science so based on that only in india temple were constructed first even now based on this only temples are constructed so temple construction is based on a pure science that is astronomy uh, and also it is based on Uh, the longitude and latitude that will be we'll described in the detailed in geographical books text see for example this is an earth uh, this is equator uh, center of the earth this is uh, 23 day and of uh, uh, tropic of cancer this is tropic of capricorn and these are all prime meridians that is longitudes we can say it is latitude lines it is longitude lines if we extend this into celestial sphere then these are all longitude celestial longitude and these are all celestial latitude but what in western science mentions suppose from this is it is the vernal equinox point uh, this line this prime meridian we will measure it as a right ascension and from this la- uh, uh, central of the earth rekha that is bhumadhya rekha or you will celestial equator we measure this line as a declination so right ascension and declination uh, that uh, words are described in western uh, astronomy but in indian astronomy also there is a word for right ascension and declination declination we call it as granti and uh, see this is the vernal equinox where it cuts with the uh, equal ecliptic of the earth so from that right ascension we will measure like this from east to west like that and declination either this way or this way uh, this is plus this is minus from uh, this uh, ecliptic we measure as a latitude and from the celestial equator we call it as a declination so these are all the important lines it is all imaginary lines we cannot <laughs> see any line on earth so this is the bhumadhya rekha that is uh, equator uh, these are all latitude lines this is longitude vertical is longitude horizontal is latitude and the special latitude lines are this is the equator zero degree uh, bhumadhya rekha we can say earth's central line and this is tropic of cancer 23.5 degree this is tropic of capricorn this is arctic pole this is antarctic pole why I, it should be uh, we should familiar with that then only we can understand uh, these are all parallel of latitude and longitude at present we are having zero degree at greenwich but before 1885 uh, this uh, zero degree longitude was at bujain in india 
After that, in 1885 only, they changed to Greenwich at UK. So from this eastern, this is western. These are all latitude up to this. And why this is important means uh, Earth is not in vertical. Uh, Earth is revolving around the sun in the ecliptic. It is in the horizontal plane. Ecliptic is in horizontal plane. But Earth is not in our, uh, vertical exactly 90 degree to this ecliptic. It is tilted. So not like this. It is tilted like this. This Earth is axis 23 and a half degree. That's why this uh, equator is cutting the ecliptic at two points, vernal equinox and autumn equinox. So this we can see. This is the ecliptic. Uh, we can imagine that sun is also going in another way uh, because Earth's movement is uh, applied to sun. And we can see that sun is revolving around the Earth. So this is e ecliptic line. This is the celestial equator. It cut at two points. This is vernal equinox. This is autumn equinox. This is the north ecliptic pole. Ecliptic 90 degree. This is south 90 degree. This way, south ecliptic pole. Uh, like this, it will be there. Earth is tilted 23.5 degree. This is north celestial pole. That is north ecliptic pole. So ecliptic pole is here, celestial pole is here. So it has, makes a 23.5 degree angle. So this is vernal equinox, this is autumn equinox. Because ecliptic is like that horizontal, celestial equator is tilted like this. That we should understand. So these are basic. Uh, Astronomy, we should understand before going to the subject. In fixing the direction, usually we will think based on a magnet, because always the magnet will be north-south. So based on magnet, we can fix easily north and south direction. Uh, what is there? In ancient India, they would have used magnet, but there is a difficult problem in using magnet to find out exact direction. Why? Because this north magnetic pole is 1,400 kilometers from the geographic north pole. Geographic north pole is different and ma north magnetic pole is different. In the same way, south magnetic pole also different, 2,752 2, kilometers uh, from the geographic south pole. You can see in, a, in the globe what we will teach in the school. This is the geographic north pole, but magnetic north pole will be here. So it won't definitely exactly point to exact north of this geographic pole, but this magnetic pole only. So direction will be changed. See, this is geographic north pole. This is magnetic north pole. You can see the difference. Exactly, this is the geographic north pole. Magnetic pole, north pole is deviated to such an extent. It is not only deviation. It constantly changes. So in 1996, uh, it was 1831, it was here, 1904. In 1948, the no North Magnetic Pole in Canada, Northern Canada. So in 2001, here. So it changes. Uh, every day, every year it changes. So we cannot fix uh, just exactly. So this is the difference. So we can calculate how much degree we can change. No, that also not possible. Because it is uh, in this year, it may be here. Next year here, next year here. So we cannot exactly have a constant to add to the north magnetic pole or subtract from the north magnetic pole to have an exact north geographic pole. That it is not possible. You can see this. So during the 20th century, it moved 1,100 kilometers. So the rate of motion has accelerated from 9 kilometers to 41 kilometers per year. So that is not possible. And diurnal variation also there. So that is a difficult thing. So we cannot use magnet to find out exact north or south. See, in 2001, what is its uh, position? In 2005, north magnetic pole, what is its position? In 2009, it moving towards Russia. So north magnetic pole, this is 2001, 4, 5 value. South magnetic pole, 1998, 2004, 2007 value. Value differs. So we cannot uh, exactly measure what is that. So then how to fix in temple construction? Why this exact fixing of the direction is important in temple construction? Because most of the temple are east facing. The presiding important deity at the Garbhagraha, that is Sanctum Sanctorium, 
should face exact east or slightly one degree towards north. And many uh, other gods should be placed in an exact direction. In northeast, this god should be there. In uh, southwest, Ganapati should be there. Kannimula Ganapati, like that. Every deity should have its own place in the temple. So, based on that only, we have to construct. So, in temple construction, exact deriving the exact direction is important. So, we have seen that magnet is not useful. Then, how to find out? This is using by Sanku. That's why I told Sanku Stapana. Sanku is a rod, wooden cylindrical straight rod, pillar or pole. Stapana means erecting, erection of the, uh, fixing the uh, uh, cylindrical wooden rod at the earth. So, that is Sanku Stapana. Based on that only, we are fixing the exact direction. Now, I will explain. See, this is in modern day, they are using iron pillar. In ancient days, they used uh, wooden rods, cylindrical wooden rod. So, this shadow is there. This is at Ujjain. Uh, so, this is Ujjain, Jandir, uh, Ujjain Astronomical Observatory. Like this, the shadow will be there. See, shadow will be there. Like that, this Sanku, this is ancient days in Sanskrit, is called Sanku. We can say either iron rod or wooden rod, cylindrical rod. See, like this, it will be there. So, how we are fixing with the basing on a sanku or wooden rod, how we are fixing exact direction. So, on an equinoctial day, that is, uh, or uh, when the declination of the sun and the local latitude are one and the same, on that day, we will fix a sanku here, one sanku, one rod here. When the sun rises in the east, this shadow will be we are making a round circle here with some radius. <coughs> so, shadow will be like this on the western side. So, when the shadow cuts this point, this circle at this, we will mark it as a west. And in the evening, <coughs> the sun will go like this. So, evening, the shadow will reduce, 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 and it will increase, 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 and it will cut the circle at one point. This is east. So, we mark it east and west. Even if it is uh, some not equinoctial day or some other day, the shadow will be like this. So, it will reduce and again it will go. So, this we can mark east-west. So, like that, even uh, when the sun is in Uttrayana, the shadow will be cutting here and cutting here, exactly at the same place, so north-west. So, like that, our ancestors in India, they found out exact north, east and west. After that, the sun declination is constantly changing. So, it is constantly changing. So, because 23 degree, 27 in three months. So, in a year, it will change by 93 degree, 48. So, even in a single day from morning to evening, the sun's declination will change. So, there cannot, if, if you join this, it cannot be exact east, not exact east west. So, they adopted another thing that is Chaya Buja. That calculation is known as Jaya Buja. That is the difference between exact east, this is exact east, and this is apparent east. This distance is D. You do not bother about the calculation, but you understand there are scientific methods. Even Indian ancestors are very accurate. That this is R sine delta, that is declination of the sun. Uh, this is delta is at the morning, declination of the sun at the morning. Delta dash is declination of the sun at the evening into hypotenuse of the shadow. Hypotenuse, I will explain, divided by R cos theta. Theta is the local latitude. So, our ancestors knew declination of the sun morning and evening and also local latitude. So, that is the thing and hypotenuse of the shadow. That I will explain. So, based on that, they calculate if, if the sun is in Uttrayana, we have to uh, make this D difference from here to here. Or if it is in Dakshinayana, southern direction, here we could mark. And we have to join this west plus E dash. That is the exact east and west. So, after that, we can fix uh, this is the center point. Based on a 
arc with a uh, diameter of this radius or diameter of this we we have to mark on like this and here like this and from here we have to mark another thing two cuts are there if we join both it will be north south so that is known as fish uh, fish shaped cutting like this it, it will be like this and from here it will be like that it will cut here in school days we will learn this in mathematics class like this like this so we will join this so this is east west and 90 degree to this is north south like that scientifically the most scientifically our ancestors in india fixed exact direction this are uh, mentioned in not uh, i am not saying myself uh, i am actually i have to thank vadeshwar the ancient astronomer who lived in india some 1117 years uh, before present vadeshwar hmm? siddhanta that is an astronomical text that is available published by indian national science academy with original text and translation hmm? by kripa singer sukla he is a feminine scholar he translated all the sanskrit shloka in the third adhyaya uh, third adhikara first adhyaya in shloka 2 and 2 to 6 all these procedures were explained so our ancestors knew exact method of fixing the east west north south direction in at least from vadeshwara siddhanta we can know they fixed 1100 years ago but it should be more than that so in that way they calculated 0 degree is the local latitude uh, and i have explained what i have to tell about hypotenuse so this is the sangu that is rod or nomen we can say nomen in english so this is the earth center so this is a vertical line and this is the place suppose this is a place in california or satology center in us we can say so this is the latitude of that place if you fix a rod at that satology center and on a particular day it will cast some shadow this rod will cast some shadow so this is the equinoctial shadow or any day shadow so if you join this tip of the sangu with tip of the shadow that is the hypotenuse so this is a right angled triangle similar triangle to this so this is the latitude which is here because it is similar the same thing will be the latitude of that, that place so depends on the shadow we can fix how much length of the shadow what is the latitude of the place we can so so even we can calculate based on this shadow the distance between two places uh, from northern Uh, america to a city in southern america that depends on the shadow we can calculate exact distance also that much it is scientific so we can see this sun is exactly for this place at zenith that is zero degree latitude there is no shadow either this side or this side suppose if it is 10 degree this shadow will be like this if it is 15 degree the shadow will increase if it is 24 degree the shadow will increase so based on the measurement of the shadow we can fix what is the latitude so if you have this uh, right angled triangle this is the sin theta this is 90 degree so what do you mean by sin theta opposite di side divided by hypotenuse so this is the length so based on that only latitude this is the latitude of that place this is the latitude so this is the center of the equator and the place is here so this is the this angle is the latitude so here also the same this is the latitude that's why you told Uh, just you can understand what is what don't bother about deeper understand this is very difficult to understand but i will try to explain uh, whatever maximum is possible so this is the horizon of a place so this is the place our concerned on earth this is west this is south east and north hmm? this is the prime meridian of that place prime meridian means we can say this 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 line longitude suppose if the place is here the prime meridian is 60 degree if it is here it is 140 degree 140 degree east this is 60 degree west like that we have to understand so 
here we can we can put a sangu or a rod here it will cast a shadow here like this and the prime meridian is here this is the celestial equator and it cuts the prime meridian at zenith that is r and at the mid noon sun will be here so sun will cast a shadow of this so this is y x is the shadow y i is the length of the rod and this is the hypotenuse suppose if you draw a perpendicular line from sun to this horizon it will cut horizon at d so this is a 90 degree here also it is 90 degree so these two are similar triangles and if you see when this is a line this is also parallel line both are parallel line if parallel line are cut by a vertical line this angle is equal to this angle and this angle is equal to this angle and this angle is equal to this angle so this is the latitude of the place that will be equal to this this will be equal to this so this is the latitude of the place this is the latitude of the place both are similar triangle not congruous triangle congruous triangle means the length of the side also should be equal but it is similar triangle identical triangle the length will vary but angle will be same this is 90 degree so this we have to understand and is here r is at this r this is the latitude because this is the latitude and this is the latitude this arc is the local latitude and it is equal to this and it is equal to this so angle d r o and o y x and also r o x r r local latitude here i am triangle r d o and this are both are similar triangles and this is r d o and y y o x are 90 degree and r o and y x are parallel in the same way r d and y o are parallel so based on this all these calculations indian ancestors knew it's some 2000 3000 years before itself all these basic as trigonometric calculations mathematical calculations that much knowledgeable persons were there in in india some 3000 or 2000 years before so so i have explained when i explained the date of mahabharata war how this bow arrow and string they are con converted into uh, trigonometric uh, sin theta cos theta ves sin theta like that i have explained that just i will say here this r sin theta is the sangu triangle this is the sangu triangle r sin theta and theta is the angle between the sangu this is the angle between sangu and hypotenuse that rod and hypotenuse that is the latitude and we can say this is what is uh, sin theta is opposite side by hypotenuse so this mentions yx is the shadow so yx is equal to latitude hmm? so like that we can call it r cos theta is r into adjacent side by hypotenuse this is r into opposite side by hypotenuse So like that we are calculating in modern trigonometry even trigonometry itself is a word derived from sanskrit trikona midi midi is measurement in sanskrit kona is angle and three means three eh? both are same three is sanskrit means three so three angle measurement of three angle that only become trigonometry and this uh, sin theta in sanskrit is mentioned as jya this only become sin in modern trigonometry so modern trigonometry itself derived from ancient indian calculations so these are all the things uh, so like this latitude of r sin theta is 3438 into shadow of the sangu divided by height of the sangu and shadow of the sangu because this is the hypotenuse hypotenuse is height of the sangu plus shadow of the rod so if you divide the hypotenuse instead of hypotenuse you can divide by this so shadow of the sangu is the opposite side and 3438 is the value of r what do you mean by r that we have to understand r is a unique thing in the indian trigonometry r e value is 3438 minutes of time how uh, indian astronomers derive that see for a circumference of the circle which is a 360 degree so what is the formula for that 2 phi r so 2 phi r is equal to 360 degree so if you divide 360 by 2 phi 
the value will be 3438 minutes. So how much accurate calculations were there in ancient India, some 3000 or 4000 years, much, much before the European revolution. That we should understand. So where this R sin theta value are given, we have to give proof now that our ancestors, Indian ancestors know, we, means we have to give proof for this R sin theta value from 3 degree 45 minute to 90 degree, it is given by Arya Bhatta in Arya Bhatti M. Modern people say it is 1500 years more old, but my calculation is more than uh, 4,700 years. And Surya Siddhanta is much, much earlier than Arya Bhatta. That also give in this second Adhyaya. Here in Sloka 11 and 12 of the second Adhyaya, Ganita Pada, it is given. So this is the value I have taken from the book. So in India, some at least 1500 or 2000 years before itself, the sign teacher value were given from 3 degree 45 minute to 90 degree. The modern value is 3437.75 and the Indian value is 3438. See, everything, this is the modern value and this is the Indian value. You can see exactly it coincides. 225, 224.8. So, there is any value you can see 1718.88, So, round figure they have given. That's all. So, is there is any, I have shown evidence, literature evidence, but yes, there is Siddhanta and Arya Bhatti and Surya Siddhanta. Is there is any practical application? Is there is any proof for this deciding the yeah, direction? using this astronomy and sun's declination, local latitude. Is there is any proof, practical proof, practical application? Yes. In Tamil literature, I can show. Uh, just to show Tamil letters. Because I am from Tamil Nadu, I am some attachment to Tamil. So that's why I told. I have shown this. But this is a Nidunal Vada, an ancient Sangam Tamil literature. At least 3000 years old. It is a uh, uh, poem praising the Talayalanganath Chiruvendra Pandian Nedinjilian, a Pandian king, Nedinjilian, much, much before 3000 or 4000 years before. It was uh, written by Madurai Kanaka and our son Nakirana. Nakiran is a famous Tamil poet who wrote Trimurgatru Padayan Murga also on Skanda. Uh, and also, this is on this Pandya king. In that, what he mentions, Madhiram from this 72 77 lines in this Nedunal Vada, an ancient, very ancient Tamil literature, Madhiram Virihatet Parapi Velvai Mandil. That means sun. Irukol Purinile Valukka the Kodakir. Irukol. I guess on one Sangu, they have adapted two Sangu, two rods. Irukol means two rods. Valukka the Kodakir. The sun is rising in the east and going. West. Kodak means west. Urudiram chara arainal amit. Arainal means half a day. That is at midnight. Urudiram chara. Either the shadow should not fall on northern side or southern side. So, the sun is exactly at the declination is exactly equal to local latitude. In that only the sun will be exactly at the zenith at midnight and the shadow of this rod will not fall either north side or north. South side, it will fall on its own. So, Varutiram Chara Arainal Amayatu, Nul Ari Pulava. Nul means that is text, Astra, uh, architectural text. That is uh, Sulba Sutra, that I will explain. Pulava means the knowledgeable, or you can say in modern time, civil engineers or architects. Nun Nidhir Kairit. They have uh, uh, put a rope on that to measure north south, they mark. Kair means rope. That's why Sulba Sutra. Sulba is rope. That also. Teyam Kundu. That is fixing the direction. So based on that only they fix the direction. They even okay. They worship the God. And Pirambayar Mannar Kuppu Manaivai. Because Pandi Nedunjalin is a great king. So for him a great palace should be constructed. Like that it explains. See there are two wooden poles are fixed vertically at a particular distance between them. On a place to be intended where the uh, palace for the king has to be constructed. 
on a day when the declination of the sun and the local latitude are same in degrees of angle, which can be found out that if the side of the rod is not falling on either north or south, then the sun is exactly at zenith at that place at mid-noon. So, the declination of the sun and local latitude will be one and the same. On that day, the sun will rise exactly on the east and it will sit almost exactly on the west. So, based on that, we can fix east and south. That is the idea based on that. So, I have given a practical application proof for this fixing the direction also. So, sulpa means root, kairu means in Tamil means root. So, Sanskrit and Tamil are one and the same, you can see, understand. And Sulpa Sutra text is Kalpa text. Sulpa means uh, rope. Uh, it is already written by Bhautayana Magarishi, Apastamba Magarishi, Katyayana, and Manava, and many other Rishis. So, I have explained this. So, the civil engineering technique proves that the Indians knew exactly and thoroughly the sun's declination, latitude of the places, and thus astronomy and ecliptic and equatorial coordinate system in the remote past itself, thousands of years much before the European scientific advancement. We can understand. So here astronomy, trigonometric mathematical calculation and civil engineering, all three are well applied in construction of this palace for the Pandya King. So I have given a practical application proof for this direction. I have given literature evidence and also practical application proof. And is there is any still existing proof for this, glaring evidence? So we can see astronomical observatories at Bujain, Jaipur and New Delhi, Jandir Mandir in India. If you go there, we can find exact proof there. And Angkor Wat, the largest, the largest Sri Vishnu temple in the entire world at Cambodia. And temples constructed, still existing, in, especially in Tamil Nadu and other states in India. These three proofs, with that proof I will conclude. So, this is the uh, Ujjain uh, Astronomical Observatory, some of the constructions are there. This is Ujjain Observatory. This is the, uh, the sun dial is there. Uh, and the transit instrument was uh, there. They explained all these things in this. I got personally there and I have taken all this photocopy. And this sundial there, this is the sundial at Ujjain. So there, they have explained this in this. This I enlarged and put it here. And this is at New Delhi, Chandin Mandir. Anybody can go, it will be within the heart of the New Delhi. So this is Ram Yandra there. They explained what is Ram Yandra. And this is the exact map. They are keeping it at the entrance itself. This is the entrance and this is Ram Yandra and other constructions. Astronomical observatory constructions are there. So still they are existing. So it's a practical application proof and how we can, so it's a exemplary proof that this astronomical observatory and astronomical knowledge were there in ancient India. It is all these three are proof. This is the Jaipur thing, astronomical observatory. This is the sun dial there. So these three things are there, still there. Anybody from will come to India, we can visit there and got explained with the local people. This is Angkor Wat. It is the largest Sri Vishnu temple, not in India, but it is in Cambodia, Southeast Asia. Here, the temple is uh, like this. This is the Angkor Wat temple, Vishnu temple. Madam, one madam, he's, she did an excellent research on that. I have to thank wholeheartedly to her and I express my courtesy and with utmost thanks for utilizing his book. After reading only, I can understand that. Angkor Wat. Uh, Eleonore Manika, published by University of Hawaii Press in 1996. 1996. And page 19 to 21, she explained all this. She worked many years on Angkor Wat. And she explained all these things in this book, Angkor Wat, Time, Space and Kingship. <coughs> I thank her for using uh, his assessment. And after researching what she told, 
if you measure the distance of various chambers in the temple in meter it won't give any clue any inference uh, like that one uh, 114.22 meter like that 202114 meter but what she insists we ought to use uh, the measuring scale of the ancestors who constructed the temple then only the answer will come so in answer lies in understanding the basic so assess it with their own scale that is her way and ways their own scale and ways not with the so called modern method which will not yield any result exactly so what she told we ought to measure the breadth and length of various chambers in cubit cubit is nothing but a unit of measure, length measurement where from the elbow up to the outstretched finger we measure the length that is the one measurement of one cubit it is a one unit of length measurement and it may be king surya narayana who constructed this temple cambodia king maybe his cubit from his elbow to the tip of the middle finger they would have used one cubit will be around 0.43545 meter and she measured the sanctum sanctorum that is the garbhagraha the moolasthana of the vishnu temple that it measures 13.41 cubit and 13.41 cubit is the basic module in the second gallery devoted to brahma so see measure everything is in multiples of 13.41 cubit like that what is it measures 13.41 cubit why they they would have adopted 13 or 14 why 13.41 cubit why this fraction surprisingly you see angkor wat is situated 13.41 degrees of northern latitude these degrees are called in sanskrit amsa its value doesn't vary even modern thing and ancient thing is same the ancestors measured that it is 13.41 amsa from 0 degree bhumadhya raga this earth center rack line from that the angkor wat situated 14 13.41 degree or amsa north that's why they adopted this 13.41 everywhere or multiply of that so that she found out the credit goes to her and another thing is if you estimate the longitude of Ang- angkor wat in relation to ujjain longitude because on those days ujjain is the zero degree longitude so the difference is 20 degree 5 minute 20 2 seconds apart so if you apply this also we can find out more result there and she also told that uh, using computer simulations angkor wat complex the terrestrial placement of principal temples are nothing but the mirrors of the stars in the constellation of draco at the time of spring equinox of 10500 bc it is her estimation and how we have to uh, assess that measurements and the magnificence of that temple she adopted eight points i quoted this so this is the very needed lesson angkor wat teaches with that conclusion she ended so i once again thank madam elena manika and her publisher angkor wat on time space and kingship is the book with utmost thanks with courtesy uh, i thank the author and the publisher this is the angkor wat temple so where this knowledge to cambodia came it is from india because cambodia and india and other places are culturally one and the same even in the remote past thousand the king name is itself is uh, uh, surya narayana varman hindu name so that is shows that everything adapted from india and another most important third proof is temples in tamil nadu state if you see many temples in tamil nadu at a particular day in the morning at sunrise the sun will sun rays will fall on the shivalinga not all 365 days either one day or three day or one week it will fall in like that manner they constructed i went to one temple tirunavalur near vilupuram in that on a particular palguna month uh, on three days it will fall on the shivalinga and also on ishwari mata 
at the foot of the feet of the Yisuri Mata. So these are all the for a few examples. In Tamil New Year Day, that Chaitra won, Sauramana, Kaur to Sankaran Koyal. Sankaran Koyal is a famous uh, Sankara Narayana. Both Ishwara and uh, Vishnu are in the same, one and the same. Sankara Narayana, Gomadhyaman Temple, and Chaitra 234 in near Tuchirapalli, neither Sitra month and uh, Ashada month, Thiru Nedungundra Thur in Chennai near Chennai, and Sravana month, and Sravana month when there is Dakshinayana, and Maga month in Uttrayana, same day, it Thiru Narayur, the sun rays will worship Sivalinga. And Bhatrapada, Palguna, like that in Pushya month, like that many temples. Pushya month, especially Amavasya. Amavasya day, that is here sun, not only sun, moon also comes in, into uh, some play. So for one week, in Trinelveli Sri Nellayapar temple, the sun rays will fall on Sivalinga. So how moon also included in that. And Sivaratri, exact Sivaratri day only. Tirumurugan Pundi near Avinashi Payamato, like that many places in Tamil Nadu. Uh, and uh, Taramangalam near Salem in the evening time, because the temple is west facing, at 5.30 p.m. it will, the sun rays will fall on Nandi. Then at the footstep of the Sanctum Sanctorium, Molastan. Then at the base and middle part and upper part of this building. Slowly the sun rays will move up. Two minutes at each part. You have to enjoy that scenery. On Maga month, 8, 9 day. Like that, many places are there. <coughs> Trinavalur, I personally went to this. In Palguna month. That is 23rd to 27th. I have personally visited that. And on Equinautical Day, that is when sun is exactly at atom equinox or vernal equinox in Gujarat state. Muadhara, that is Dharma Aranya, Sanskrit name. It is 102 kilometers from Karnavati and the bank of Puspavati river, Bhimdev, that is the place. It's Solangi kingdom, 1026 years, 1000 years, nearly 1000 years before itself, it was constructed. The light rays of the sun fall on Surya in the morning on equinoctial day alone. That is uh, now if you say March 21st and uh, another day will be June, June 21st, 23. Uh, what the history of that uh, temple says, Sri Rama and Sita Mata worshipped sun god on returning from Ayodhya and returned to Ayodhya from Lanka on the advice of Rishi Varshita. So every place in India, they will be either connected with Ramayana and Mahabharata. Ramayana and Mahabharata are mainly concerned with Uttra Pradesh. But any state in Tamil Nadu, even it is Assam, Gujarat, Jammu Kashmir, Tamil Nadu, they will connect themselves with either Ramayana and Mahabharata. It is uh, in, inside their heart. We cannot separate. And in Tirunageshwaram, it is a wonderful thing. Uh, especially on Kartika month, Kritika month, on Pournami day, the moon rays will fall at the feet of the Amba, Ishwari. Pirai, Ani, Vaan, Nudal, Umayambike. Or Gujambike. Artha, Chandra, Bimba, Gujambike. That uh, Mata will have one moon at her head. Artha, Chandra, Bimba, Gujambike. It is Sri Naganada Swami, Raghustala. And every year, Kartike month, Pournami, at night to 8 to 9 pm, the Moon rays will fall at the feet of the Ambar, Deva, Devata. So they are telling Chandra is worshipping, perform puja and worship this Ishwari. So this is the temple, Ragustala. How huge temple it is. How it is possible? See, earth is revolving around the sun like this. And moon is revolving around the earth like this. So in Kartika month at Kartika Pournami, the moon will be in conjunction with Kritika Nakshatra. And sun will be here. So if you see from sun, earth will be here. 
earth and moon will be exactly coinciding with krithika nakshatra so sun rays will get reflected from here and it will be a full moon day pournami but if you construct a temple exactly facing night during night time this is the western direction so this is east so if you construct the ambal temple exactly east considering the lat uh, longitude of the earth longitude at this longitude and this declination of the moon coinciding with the krithika nakshatra if you know all these scientific calculations only moon's revolution and earth's revolution and its position conjunction with krithika nakshatra declination of the moon and declination of the sun and also the longitude of the earth all these value if you know perfectly only then only you can construct a temple that on that kartika pournami day full moon day the moon rays will fall at the feet of the amba devata without the scientific knowledge with the, just like that we cannot construct so our ancestors in thousands and thousands of year before itself they constructed like this means they know all this astronomical data calculation astronomy thoroughly then only they can construct like that and another temple in tingalu it is a chandra sthala that is ragu sthala navagraha sthala ragu this is chandra moon sthala and palgunamand pournami at sunrise the light rays of the sun fall on shivalinga sunrise in the morning and moon rise will be in the after at around 6 pm in the evening the light rays of the moon will fall on shivalinga so both coins are on the same day how it is possible you can see uh, this is palguna nakshatra putra the purva palguna now in the previous picture earth will be here and moon will be here from krithikam kartika man so this come here so that from sun if you see earth and moon will be in conjunction with uttara palguna nakshatra that's why palguni man why it is called Ma- kartika man because on kartika man the pournami day the nakshatra will be kartika that's why it is named as kartika man in the same way in palguna man the on pournami day moon will be in conjunction with palguna man palguna nakshatra that's why it called as palguna man naming also it is scientific way only astronomic so on that day this if you this is during night this is west this is east so if you construct shiva temple towards east and also if you know declination of the moon and also longitude of the earth and also declination of the sun and also what is the angle of this palguna nakshatra if you know all this data astronomical data only then only you can construct and make it possible that the sun rays will exactly fall on on morning when the morning its sun rays will fall and earth will rotate in 6 uh, 12 hours and this temple will come here so moon rays will fall so you see the difference here krithika man kartika man this is palguna man so this is the temple i have visited both temple how it is possible what is the scientific basis behind this is sun this is earth on pournami or full moon day the sun rays will get reflected from fully from moon so it is a full moon but in new moon only this part of the moon will be illuminated this part will be dark because it is opposite to sun so you know, we cannot see moon it is dark so it is new moon like that uh, like moon will go around earth like this this is one thing and the earth's axis is tilted that i explained see how this sun rays exactly fall at this place here it is a fall at an angle here it falls at an angle only at this place that is uh, earth's equator during march 21 and june 21 it will fall at vertically at these places see this picture is more it's important you see in uh, equinoctial day that is march 21st and september sorry not june it is september please correct if i am wrong september 26th this is vernal equinox this is autumn equinox the sun rays will fall exactly at the equator that is central line of the 0 degree latitude of the earth but in june 21st the, because earth is tilted the sun rays will fall at 
tropic of cancer but in december 22nd sundays will fall at tropic of capricorn cancer will be tropic of cancer will be up so here only it is vertical 90 degree that is the difference so in between either it will be in this area only so this thing our ancestor indian ancestors knew well so they adapted the technique and found built the temple see this is the thing see in north pole on june 21st the sun rays will fall directly here so there will be six months of daylight whereas in december 22nd the sun rays will fall so it is completely this is arctic circle you see dark here arctic circle completely with sun rays here antarctic circle is dark this is the basic thing. in december this antarctic pole that is antarctica island will be completely with sunlight whereas in june 21st it is completely in dark so six months daylight six months night so uh, for us each day will have night and day but here six months day six months night will be there. so all these scientific calculation scientific knowledge wisdom astronomy everything geography everything the indian ancestors knew some 3000 years at least they applied practically in the temple construction especially fixing the direction and also the sunlight falling on the main deity that also they applied so that people will enjoy that also no and sun has to worship the ishwar and ishwari no so that for that they have adapted all these things so this is the most scientific way even if you want to construct exact our house facing exact east or west or north south we cannot use magnet uh, we have to use this ancient indian technique exactly to find out what is exact east for at that for suppose california or satellite place if you want to know exact east you know the sun's declination and the local latitude of that place coincidence on that you put erect a rod and if the shadow doesn't move based on that shadow you can construct exactly find out east and west direction and also we can construct many temples like that so all these are scientific knowledge were there in temple construction it is not uh, just like that without any idea they constructed they constructed with full background of scientific knowledge and technique that is proved by literature and also practical application and present day civil constructions which are present in angkor wat and also jantin mandir and many temples in india so this is pure scientific it is not only the construction even the temple itself is a scientific lab uh, that kalasa what is copper thing we are putting up but for that and also how they are selecting the stone for the main deity and also the how they give the cosmic power to that stone and make it a deity that and all scientific that if time permits in my next class i will explain uh, now i conclude i am dr amal raja uh, these are all my contact numbers i am post graduate in ma and diploma in archaeology and i am a basically ophthalmologist and doctor so with that i conclude i express my nandri dhanyavaadak and thanks to sri aditya ji for giving me the great opportunity to explain all these things and also the volunteers of satology and also the professors eminent scholars and in- students beloved students of various psc universities they are listening patiently at this morning hour i wholeheartedly express my thanks to them thank you aditya ji Uh, thank you so much one thing really strikes out the the hindu temples are so scientifically designed in terms of directions and also in terms of usage and mm. one thing you did not uh, uh, cover maybe that the surrounding the temple was the entire marketplace like there was a doctors over there there were shop shops over there which are still there in many parts so like the temple was the center of the town main street you can call it Mm. you know of the town the main street concept has gone away from us is still existing in europe but uh, generally in us is not there because the supermarket chains have come in. 
there's one very good friend of mine who lives in New Zealand. I don't know where is he right now. He told me that temples were replaced by shopping malls. You know, people invest crores of rupees in shopping malls, so it makes them money. But if people were to invest that kind of money in temples and build the surrounding areas around the temple, then they might make more profit actually. Because anyway, yes, people will go to the temple. are not only spiritual center, it is a social center and culture center. Cultural center, that's right. Education center, everything in one thing. Like in, in Mahabharata and other places, there is a small reference I read actually in Mahabharata that even the doctors were, clinics were around the temple, where they are, hmm. around the temple. People go there, get their health check done, and then they come out. And the Nasik Kriya, which was for vaccination, which was also there in ancient India, and which was also around the temple. You know, so not just, it was not just a place of worship, it was a place of culture, arts, education, social change, discussions, you know, all those things are around. Even judiciary, judiciary is within the temple. Only. Within the temple. Mm -hmm. you know, so all those things have been replaced in the colonial attacks on India by Islamic invaders as well as Christian invaders. We have actually lost the vision of our ancestors in India. Yeah, a large extent. You know, so in the in the in the wild rush of uh, building a new industrial India on par with the West. We forgot that we can do better than them. India can do better than yeah, them. Yeah. In a hastiness to copy Western world, we lost what we have, the treasure. Exactly. We lost the diamond in chasing uh, some stones like that only. Exactly. Yeah. No. So thank you so much. And people say industrialization brings peace. No, industrialization has brought pollution as well as excessive amount of uh, concentration in the wealth of in few individuals. And uh, Arthashastra says it very clearly, Kautilya's Arthashastra says that the wealth, to spread the wealth, we have to use the temples. And Sanatan Dharma is the best institution to spread the wealth. You know, so, uh, you know, it is not socialism in a way because uh, Sanatan Dharma is highly, you know, we respect wealth. But at the same time, uh, the wealth has to be spread, otherwise it creates social upheaval. Cotillia says, if the wealth is not distributed, it creates social problems. And which is happening exactly in the world, like in USA, 1% of the population owns 99.5% of the wealth. So 0.5%... In, in temple, and constructing the temple, everybody ends. In the whole society, whole town ends. Some work. In some place, they, some work job will be given to them cleaning the temple and maintaining that thing, that thing. So everybody get their earnings, get their sap. So everybody were happy with the temple. Yeah. So and replacing yeah. temple with mall, not everybody is happy. Not everybody is happy. Few people uh, are money people. is not distributed equally. That's with right. the temple, That's it right. is distributed equally. That's right. This is social harmony and social peace will be were there in India because of the temples. Yeah. I think we need to bring back the culture where temples need to be constructed more at a bigger pace all over the country. India, at least India, we can do that, every part of India, because the temples can become the major source for help for people, not just uh, for the uh, you know outsiders. It's major help for the people. So thank you so much, Dr. Raja, as usual. Wonderful presentation and very really researched you. one. And also, uh, I really like the quote you did with the Harvard, uh, that, uh, the Hawaii Press publication. And that was a good one. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar.